Yeah, kid. Welcome, welcome to back to another episode of the Handsome Home Buyer Podcast. My name is Charles, aka the Handsome Home Buyer, aka Captain Permit, aka AKA the 2020 LLS Man of the Year. All right, great show today. We've messed up about four takes so far, which is the first for this, but that means it's going to be a real good one. All right. We got the future of America in the room, but before we go into the future of America, do you know who the future of the permit world is, Maddie? Hold on, bring it in here, man. Don't half-ass it on me. Captain Permit. Damn right, Captain Permit. 516-513-8838. And if you need plans, you need permits, you need anything permit related, and we have the most handsome man, handsome front man leading the charge, Mike. 516-513-8838. If you, need, if you need plans, permits, decks, legalizations, new constructions, finished basements, interior alterations, you name it, we do it. We're the best of the best. We've gotten in trouble doing 300 plus houses. Nobody knows it like we do. So give us a call. Obviously, I'm the handsome home buyer. If you have a house that smells like cat pee is dated from the 1960s, has six inches of mold on the wall, human waste floating past the basement steps, commercial land, gas stations, temples, churches, Office buildings, assisted living facilities, self storage facilities, whatever it is, I'm quick, I'm easy, I'm all cash, I'm a good time. I want to buy it. 516 777 sold. All right. Very different kind of podcast today. You guys ready? You excited? Yeah. You look excited. Yeah. Ken, you excited? I'm pumped. Ken is definitely as pumped as anybody can be. So, about uh, everybody who knows me knows this. If you don't, you're about to find this out. I was a terrible student, right? My parents wish for me to have a kid that is like me so I can understand the torture that it was to be them during my childhood, apparently. I uh, was repeatedly thrown out of class. I was told by every teacher that I would never be shit, and it just wasn't the best of the best experience, all right? I would argue that the public school system is failing children every day. Ken, not, for, not you, though. You're not failing anybody. You're the man. I'm trying. No, I'm you, trying. You're, you are the man. You're there. Thank you. So I was uh, Mr. Ken Hanlon, high school professor, and Realtor Extraordinaire was gracious enough to reach out to me and ask me to come in and speak to his entrepreneur class about, how long was that, Ken, a month ago? Yeah. About a month ago. Yeah. And uh, which was an unbelievable experience for me. Pretty much the highlight of my year because I got to go back. And, you know, everybody gets older. I'm 40 now, right? Everybody gets older and they look back at high school and like, you know what? I really wish I knew this, this, and this, or someone was able to tell me this, this, and that. So I was like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to high school and I'm going to tell them, this, 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 all the stuff that you think matters doesn't matter. This is what I'd recommend. Be a plumber. So I got to do that. And it was a very, very rewarding experience. There was like, what, how many kids we had? 50 kids? Uh, we had about 35 kids in the room. So we had 35 kids. And in the mix of those 35 kids, uh, so there's, there's good and bad with getting old, guys. I'm going to let you know. You're, so our guests today are uh, 15 and 17. And we're going to talk business. We're going to talk the future of the rap game. We're going to talk Long Island. We're going to talk anything that comes out. Nobody even knows what's going to come out. Lord, I don't even know what's going to come out. But um, when you get older, think good, good and bad happens, right? The bad is, not probably for you, but for you, like, you get hair that grows out of your ear, six, eight inches long that you don't want. You had to snip off it. That sucks. You can't really eat ice cream anymore. When you start to eat ice cream, it just coagulates as this – Thing on your rib cage that takes months of Peloton workouts to come off. But the good thing is, Jen is like, you're out of your mind. The good thing is you kind of develop this like kind of psychic-esque thing where you can look at people and under and just see something in them in a situation and you just kind of like know. It's like a like a psychic kind of thing. Right? Only without the tarot cards. So during the course of my 40 minutes of madness in the class. I saw the two of you guys and I was like, we got to have a podcast because I see like greatness in these two people. Like there's just, there's, there's something in there. Obviously we didn't get to like really talk, talk, but I'm, I looked at the two of you guys and just the way you were interacting and how engaged you were. And I like, I saw like the little wheels turning in your heads and I was like, we got to flush it out, talk business, talk tech, talk where they're going, how they're changing the world. And we got to do it on the podcast. So with that, I want to give a warm welcome to the future of hip hop. In how many years? Five years? Ten years? Today? Tomorrow? Is it already happening? As soon as possible. As soon as possible. The future 
of the hip hop world, which is as soon as possible. Ali the King, Iqbal. What's going on, guys? King Ali here. I am a rap. I'm a, I'm a rap. I'm a hottest rapper on Long Island. Uh, I just dropped. I just dropped my new single, Jingle Balls, on December 7th. If you guys haven't checked it out already, you guys should definitely check it out. Link is in my Instagram bio, definitely at the, the kingali.underscore. I am also a realtor-to-be, so if any brokerages are watching this and would like to send out a sponsorship, don't be afraid to hit me up <laughs> in my DMs or in an email. <laughs> I'm also writing a book on self-help, which is going to be available uh, probably mid to late 2020. And I also want to drop Civic Service, which is... Uh, you know, a hell of a time. If you guys want to hear more about that, don't be afraid to follow me on my Instagram. Anything else? How old are you? 17. Jesus. And we have a little more modest, Jenna Dolce. <laughs> so both of these young people, <laughs> that's it? Nothing? I guess that, that's, that's balancing it out, right? They both go to uh, Eastport South Manor yes. High School. Jenna's a sophomore. The King is a senior. You're going to be graduating. All right, so we're gonna talk. Uh, we're gonna talk business. I know Jenna has a. When I saw Jenna, I'm like, Jenna's got like this thing in her head, this like master plan that's gonna revolutionize some kind of industry, right? All right, cool. We're gonna talk about it. Ali, obviously, you know what Ali's doing. He's taking over the world. So I want to get a little bit of background about you guys, right? We'll switch back and uh, we'll switch back and forth. Uh, so Ali, a little bit of background, um, nationality, where you come from, where'd you grow up? I mean, you told you were, uh, you were from the Q, so now you're down in Long Island. Had you ever, had you get into the rap game? Good question, actually. I was born in Syracuse, New York. My parents are from Pakistan and, uh, you were born here though. They were born there. Yeah, I was born, I was born in New York. Uh, I'm a native New Yorker, L.I. till I die, baby. And keep going, dude, don't stop. And my, so I'm from Syracuse, New York. I moved to Long Island when I was very young. I used to, I lived in Beltport for a while. Now I live in Manorville, New York. Uh, I'm I'm such I'm so thankful to be able to call that to call Long Island my home. And I'm gonna be one of the. I honestly believe that I'm gonna be the future of the hip hop industry within the next ten years. And I also run one a a rec. I also run a record label. So that it is uh, it's still it's still emerging. I'm the only artist that's signed to it so far as myself. Any artists out there? Who are looking to sign, sign, you know, get in, get involved, just launch your music career yourself. Don't be afraid to shoot me a DM. I'm always open to doing projects, collaborations, and whatnot. I'm also get, trying to get. Into, uh, I'm also a realtor to be. So if any bro, again, I'm gonna say it again. If any brokerages are looking out there, looking for try, trying to sponsor a young stallion in the game. That's, <laughs> All right, Ali, follow my lead on this. So how did you? Where did the love of music start? Because I. I, I love music. I want to be musical, right? I played the clarinet and band in like ninth grade. The only problem was they threw me out because I would talk too much. This is a true story. So just out of curiosity, how'd you get into music? Why'd you gravitate to the hip hop world? Take me through it. Yeah, so I've actually, I've been playing the clarinet from a very young age. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. You didn't get thrown out of band, though. No, I didn't get thrown out of band. Actually, no, that's, that's actually a lie. I didn't get thrown out of band the first year. You don't want to get thrown out of band. It's not good. Yeah, I got thrown into chorus. But uh, that, that was fun, too. And then I eventually got let, let right back into the band. And I played clarinet from fourth grade all the way up until uh, ninth grade, and that, that and uh, it was a hell of a lot of fun. And what my for for rap, I started around I started in May of this year. So basically, it all started as a joke, and everyone was I, I started this joke where oh you know I'm gonna post a song on SoundCloud, I'm gonna post this you know a track on SoundCloud. It's gonna but you were always into hip hop. Oh, yeah, no, I, I actually you know that's not true either because I've actually. I've when I was actually younger, I didn't like hip hop that much. I thought it was dirty. I thought it was. It was... Jenna, do you like hip hop? Um, sometimes it depends on like the mood I'm in. Yeah, depends. She's not judging you, bro. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> nah, so I thought it was, I completely thought I never actually when I was younger, I never liked hip hop. I thought it was dirty. I thought it was malicious. I didn't. I didn't like. I thought it was just too much for me. And I was never truly a fan of hip hop. Uh, but look at me now. Fast May forward. I, cut in and I had Ali in seventh grade, and if you told me in five years this would be. Where we ended up, I, you know, would have lost the bet. Yeah, Mr. Hanlon can. I thought out now. Oh, by the way, who uh, introduced you to the real estate game? And you're here out, out here selling yourself on camera. All and right. I'm the guy who brought you into the industry. All right, I'd like to thank. We'll talk after the uh, blog. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I, I've. What was I going to say? I, I, so it all started out as a joke, basically. I started out with a joke. A couple of my friends were like, oh, I'm going to post a song on SoundCloud. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, you should do it, man. And it all started out as a joke. I wasn't ever really serious about it. But in, in that event of time, 
uh, I found out of another friend of mine who who reached out to me, and he's like, oh, so I've heard that you're going to be posting a song on SoundCloud. I'm like, yeah, it was just sort of like a little joke. I may or may not. And he's like, well, you know, I got, you know, this much music of, on uh, on SoundCloud, and you know, I can, I can uh, you know, you should really do it. And he sort of, he sort of you know, in, in, encouraged me as well and to, to get into the rap game. And I didn't know this guy's been making music for almost two years, and I've known him for t- two years, and he's been making music for such a long time. But he kept it a little bit on the down low because he didn't want everybody in school knowing and, you know, sort of, sort of knowing about all, everything that he did. So, you know, shout out Tanaga if you're watching this. And uh, so, so I released my first track on May 11th of 2019. It was called Late Night Dreams. If you go on my SoundCloud, you can still find it. So this it. is a recent thing. Oh, yeah, this is, rel- this is very recent. I okay. Yeah. This is very recent. This is a 2019 movement. Yeah, this is a 2019 movement. Going into 2020, we're going to kill it this next year, you guys. If you guys, if you guys are watching, any of my fans are watching this. And so I started I started in May of 2019. Uh, May, on May 11th of 2019, I dropped my first track, uh, Late Night Dreams, on SoundCloud. And on that same day, I took it. I had a post-it note. And I had a post-it note, and I don't know if you guys follow me on Instagram, but I posted a picture of it. And I put it on my wall on that same exact day. And I said, within 10 years, I'm going to be the face of the hip-hop industry. And I signed my name, King Ali, underneath that. And it's up till this day, it's still on my wall, right next to my door. So whenever I wake up and I walk out, I see that. And it makes me remember my vision. And it makes me remember everything that I stand for. It makes me remember why I get up in the morning and, and why, what I'm chasing. All right, so let me stop you for a second. That's why, so specifically on you for a minute, that's what I really like about you. So the cool thing... I feel my biggest attribute, but I'm again, I'm 40, is that society has no hold on me. And what I mean by that is I don't care about what anybody thinks of me at all. I have like, I, I nobody, like whatever anybody thinks, I don't care. But that was a process. I've been like that for a while. You're like that at 17. You really don't care. Like you don't care what anybody thinks. You are out there. You are going to say what you want to say, do what you want to do. And I have a ton of respect for that. And I wish that I was that way when I was your age. I'm just curious to know how long you've been like that and where did that come from? Uh, it, start, it started about, and honestly, when I was younger, I was a little bit more reserved. I, I didn't want to say a lot of things. I was, you know, so young. You are now. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I, like yeah, you can say when, when, I, when I was around 10, 11, 12, 13, you know, but once I, once, but once I got, you know, into high school, I started, you know, I started to become a lot more, more, you know, out there, you know, uh, extroverted talking to different people different the dicks and that uh, you know marketing with different people networking with different people you know because your network is your net worth at the end of the day and so I started networking with a lot more people and it was at the same at this you know at the same time it was kind of a rebellion against my oldest self because my oldest self was so reserved and I had missed out on so many different opportunities so I made a promise to myself that I was never gonna let myself miss out on all hold those on sorts let of me that. stop you there had to be a pivotal moment right so like there had to be a moment where you went from being reserved Ali right to the king there was there had to be a moment there had to be something that happened right because in my my opinion and i might be wrong but this is just this is like the long-haired eared old psychic version of myself when something great like change great change comes from very strenuous kind of events or like some kind of chain of events so was there like a moment in your life or something that happened that kind of said to you you know what i don't want to be the more reserved version of myself i want to be i'm going for mine i'm putting that posted up there i'm gonna be the future of the rap game i'm gonna be all over social media and i don't care what anybody thinks yeah, actually, that happened in high when I first got into high school around ninth grade. When I first got into high school around ninth grade, uh, everybody started, you know, planning on what they're going to be doing in the future. You know, going, to, you know, oh, I'm going to this college to be studying this. I'm going to go study, co- uh, you know, be, at first I was actually going to college to study biology. That's what I wanted to do when I was younger. I wanted to go to the university and I study biology. That's what my parents wanted me to do. That's what they liked for me to do. Being from a very traditional rural background, they, they that's what they kind of wanted me to do. You know, get a, get go to college, get a good paying job, live that. Uh, sort of, you know, secure life that everybody else wants to live. And I've sort of realized is that I wasn't never, I was never really too much of a fan of school. I didn't hand my homework in on time. I didn't, I didn't do all, handing all the assignments when they were due. And, and <laughs> yeah, and I, and I was never exactly the, 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 you know, the example of the model student. And so I realized to myself and I'm like, dang, I'm, I need, I need to, you know, what am I going to do with my, with myself? I'm, you know, I'm, how am I going to, and, and a lot of teachers, the, who spoke to me? They were like, Ali, you know, you're you're a good kid. You're you're you know you're smart and whatnot. But you're not going to be able to get anywhere if you just continue to be lazy. And I thought to myself, and I, and you know, over the years, I'm like, oh my god, maybe I'm just you know. You're not lazy. Lazy at all. You work very hard. And and that's the thing. And I thought, is it is it that I'm lazy, or is it maybe that I don't find enjoyment or fulfillment in what I'm doing? And that's. Damn! And, and and that's and that's what's causing me to not be as motivated and driven in doing these sorts of things. And so that's when I – and I've been thinking of this of, of different sort of schemes and plots of, of how – what I'm going to be doing after. I've always been interested in real estate. Um, 
I'm, I'm hopefully going to get my lic uh, license in 2020. Going to be. Oh, that's true. Failure is not okay. failure is not an option. I'm going to be, you know, I, and my 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 goal is, uh, as a as a realtor, is to sell over five million dollars worth of property within my first year. That is my goal as as a real as a realtor in in twenty in twenty 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 one, uh, the season to come up. And that's my that's my my personal goal of mine. A lot of people told me that you're crazy. You can't do it. It's it's not it's not exactly possible for a new realtor to come into the game. And, and do that so quickly. I know people who've made over six figures in sales, and I've known people who've made less than ten thousand dollars. But I, I truly and honestly believe that I'm gonna, if you know, I'm gonna put my ev my effort forward, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, do, and I'm gonna do this. I might kill this in 2020, 2021, kind of the upcoming season. And yeah. so, is is the is the hip hop thing more of a hobby? Is it a passion that you want to do for the rest of your life? Is it more real estate related? Are you still trying to figure it out? Because listen, I mean, and there's no, there's nothing wrong with that. Seven, like I didn't know really what I wanted to do until I was in my early 30s. I didn't even know who I was until I was 30 years old. So there's, there's no harm in that. I mean, the fact that you have such direction, even with the two things at 17, is, is huge. Right. And one of the things that I, I, I promised myself, or, or maybe not promised to myself, but, but I, but I've been thinking for, for quite a while now, is that I don't really want to be that, you know. That, that one hit wonder. I don't want to be that guy who just does one thing. I want to have multiple streams of revenue. I want to have to be able to do multiple things because I'm passionate about more about lots of different things outside of hip hop. I'm passionate about so many different things. So how you know if I were to limit myself to this one genre or one box, then I wouldn't be smart on, on my part. And there's so many different things that I'm, I'm I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about real estate. I'm passionate about hip hop. I'm passionate about uh, drop shipping, which I've been doing for for a while now. It's just one of the hot things in 2020. If you guys want to hear more about that. Uh, definitely go and follow me, and I, I've been, I've been passionate about all these sorts of different things, and I want to be able to run so so uh, more, more than one business because I'm passionate about so many ever different things. So if I were to limit myself to one genre like hip hop or realty or or you know any any one specific genre, I feel like I could be doing myself a disservice. And just just remember this, right? And I want you I want to tell you guys this because someone told me this a long time ago, and I think it's the best thing I ever heard, which was. It's important to have mentors, right? When you have mentors, it, it accelerates your learning process. You know, obviously, you get there faster, et cetera. But the best students are the ones that don't entirely trust their teachers, right? Remember that. Because with every mentor you have, whether it be myself, Mr. Hanlon, other people you meet along the way, their reality is not your reality. They grew up in a different time. I'm growing up in a different time than you are. He grew up in a different time than all of us. No disrespect, Ken. Um, but you know, we and other people can take you to a certain point. But there comes a point where you have to be you living in the time that you're living in and say, you know, you don't think that's good for me, but I know it's good for me. And you have to like take that leaf and kind of break apart. And that happens with mentors, it happens with parents, it happens, and, and that's the natural process. So just, if there's one thing I could tell you, just burn that into your, into your mind. Because a lot of times, you know, we look at, at mentors and people and they can hold us back in certain cases. Let them help you, but then understand that you're your own person and you're your own individual, right? Another thing is, I'm similar to you. Like, I have a lot of energy. You might have more energy than me. It's close. It's a toss-up. It's a toss-up. Um, go out there. Experience everything. Test everything out because that's what life is about. Life is about variety. It's about finding your passion. It's about you know new and different experiences. At the same time, you don't want to do a million different things at the same time because it's very hard to do a million different things well because there's only 24 hours in a day. Even for someone like yourself who's up at 4 in the morning posting stuff on TikTok, you know, you um, you still have to sleep. You know what I mean? Follow me on TikTok, by the way. <laughs> so I'm gonna. Uh, Find I would... out what brings you the most joy. You know? Yeah, and, and yeah, happy. don't focus on the money. Whatever you're passionate about, and what you really love, you can make money doing anything. Especially today, man, you can make money selling widgets, cords, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It's it's so easy today, and there's so much opportunity. You guys are in such an unbelievable time and place. So uh, I want to switch to Jenna for a minute. Jenna, how you doing over there? That's a lot to follow up. <laughs> um, so you are like you are like Ali and my, Ali and I are, are kind of like you're like our antithesis in the sense that you're like the organized version that I really want to be. I can sense very very intelligent, got everything planned out, pragmatic. Before you leap, you're gonna plan everything, make sure it's good to go, and then you're ultimately gonna gonna go and gonna be very successful in whatever you do. So I know that you have a bunch of questions. Um, Ken has told me that you have this idea for some type of business that's like brewing in your mind, but you've like really kept it under wraps. Do you want to talk about it in front of the world? 
So um, up to you. Do, you. do you have some questions you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about the general business idea? Well, first, actually, give us a little bit of background on uh, you know where you grew up, where you're from, things you're interested in, et cetera. I've always uh, grown up in Lo I've always been in Long Island. Mm -hmm. I've always just been here. Um, you grew up in Annabelle? Yeah. Okay. Well, I was born like somewhere else, and then I lived in a condo for a while. Right. Then I moved out to Manorville. And then I've been living here for 10 years. And then I've always grown up around entrepreneurs. My dad's a serial entrepreneur. My mom uh, owns her own graphic design business. Very cool. What does your dad so, do? Um, it's a very long explanation. Okay. And it always takes him like five minutes to explain it every time I ask. Is it something in finance? No, it's something oh. with solar. Okay. And it, he has three companies with that. And my mom has her own graphic design company. So I've very always cool. been around in that area. Mm -hmm. And then I've recently gotten a job five months ago at a pizza place, and right. I'm doing more than I should be. Oh, uh, yeah, I actually make the pizzas there too, and I like make stuff. I like help out in the kitchen, so I'm getting a lot more experience than I should be. The name of the pizza place is Gotta Guy Eatery in Calverton. Okay. It's very good, and it's a small business. It's just my two bosses and me. I'm the only employee, mm -hmm. so I'm like kind of doing everything. So I'm getting a lot of experience at a young age. Very cool. So, basically, so I was I'm in a similar boat to you as my my dad was a serial entrepreneur. He's owned businesses my entire life. So for some people, it's it's a bigger leap. I give a lot of credit to you, uh, King, because if you if you come from a family where it's more of a traditional kind of go to college, get a job s type of thing, it's harder to do what you're doing, which is pursue your passion. For for us, it's kind of everyday life. It's it's what's normal. Like my dad's had his own business since he's 21 years old. So that's kind of all I've known. So I feel comfortable on that. So I'm very grateful to him for that. It sounds like you're in the, the same scenario with your parents with your mother having her own business, your father having her own business. So you just, um, I guess you just ultimately always felt that you were going to be an entrepreneur. I never really had, I was always like, at first it was like a makeup company that I wanted to start with. Like I've, I've never had an idea of what I wanted to do outside of being my own business owner. Okay. So you knew you wanted to be in business. You just yeah. didn't know what it was. Okay. So for a long time it was makeup, and now it's switching into like more of like the food department. Your makeup game is on point, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Contours, you're on point. I know a lot more about makeup than I should. I worked in Roosevelt Field Mall at Kenneth Cole for three years across from Mac, and I was friends with all the girls, and they would put makeup on me. And it's just a long story; it doesn't matter. But I know a lot about I know a lot about makeup, and I know a lot about nails, UV gels, all that stuff. You rocking UV gels? Yes. Are those UV gels? These are yeah, they're UV gels. <laughs> Keep going. Oh, so you always knew you want to be an entrepreneur, but you weren't sure exactly what it was. And recently you've, I mean, as entrepreneurs, we, we fail, right? We, we go through different ideas that are good, not good. We morph them. Have you had a number of different business ideas? I know you have one where Ken actually like, you know, let me peek in and it's, it's awesome. And I want to talk about it because I, uh, it centers around the food industry, correct? You want to tell everybody about it a little bit first? It's kind of like all those food delivery services that you hear about, like DoorDash, Uber Eats, whatever. Uh, my dad's a vegetarian. I mean, my dad's a vegan. My sister's a vegetarian. So it was kind of hard to like go out to eat with them because before they had like all the dietary needs, we would go out to eat a lot, and it was fun because my mom can't cook. And <laughs> yeah, sorry, mom. But it was fun to go out to eat. And now that they're more switching to vegan and vegetarian, we don't go out to eat as much. But my mom and I still enjoy that, but we can't have like family meals as much. Mm -hmm. So I like to order DoorDash and so does my family, but we can't really do that as easily when we know there's going to be like some sort of things like if you have a dietary need like peanuts, you can't just like easily select something without worrying. Mm -hmm. So my idea was to create some sort of thing with a dietary needs where you can select your profile on what you needed. So the restaurant is aware that you're ordering from, like what your need is, so they can specifically just like cater to your needs. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, I was a vegan for 19 days. I'm like, I'm going to try the vegan thing out. I lasted 19 days. And the reason why I lasted 19 days on Long Island is because I, I don't have any time. Like I'm 24-7, just work all the time, school. And in order to, to be a vegan and eat healthy, you need time. Like you need time to go and shop. You need time to prep the food. And it's, there's not a lot of like healthy vegan options around. So ultimately, after 19 days, I fell off. But while I was on it and I was eating well, I felt amazing and I loved it. It was something that I would like to go back to. But unfortunately, there's not a lot of healthy, there's not a lot of fast, healthy vegan options on Long Island. If you're in Manhattan or in a major city, it's a lot easier. 
but out here it's not. So I think the idea is brilliant. So what's the, it's, it's a delivery as, and, and delivery is also becoming huge. Like they, the amount of delivery I think is up from like 17% to like 36%. It's like a 50% jump in the last year. Now a lot of places are just running their, um, their food establishments off Instagram and social media. And they're, they're setting up these industrial spaces. I was actually looking at this for a real estate play. So I was, they're setting up industrial spaces and chopping them up into like mini kitchens and they're just doing delivery out of there. Like people aren't having like regular storefront as type of places anymore. Pizzeria in Rocky Point took over like a 600 square foot space yeah. because of the delivery possibilities. There's no way three families can go in there and enjoy a meal at one time, but he's looking at the just the delivery game and yeah. where he is. And it's a satellite of a restaurant he already owns, so his name's already out there, so he's just like a hub, yeah. if you will. I mean, the important thing that you guys realize, what I think everybody needs to realize is that a lot of people come to me and they're like, Charles, you know, like I want to do business, I want to do this, I want to do that. Like I don't see any opportunity. Where's the opportunity? I'm like, there's opportunity everywhere, especially today with technology the way it is. It changes all the time. So kudos to you guys. A, obviously there's a void in the rap game that you're filling. B, <laughs> B um, you've seen that there's a void in the market there. There's people that want to enjoy vegan or vegetarian food. They want it to be fresh. They want it to be affordable. They want it to be delivered. And there's just no option there. It's becoming almost a trend. Yeah. But there's not, you can't really enjoy it if there's not a lot of options for you. Like, for example, with my dad, he eats the same exact thing, like, every night. So there's not, like, very much fun in it, per se. So. Yeah, and then that's the thing. Ultimately, if you're a person that wants to be healthy but likes food, like, my mother's 100% Sicilian. She cooked every night just intense Italian food. So I just, I, I love food. And there are some amazing vegan options. Like, have you had um, Van Leeuwen ice cream? I don't think so. So Van Leeuwen is this, is it Van Leeuwen? Van something or other, I'm pretty sure it's Van Leeuwen. It's vegan ice cream, it's made out of cashew milk. It is the most amazing ice cream I've ever had in my life. Better than haagen better than anything with milk in it. So there's a lot of really tasty options, but they're just not available to people. So I know you have some questions. You wanna ask some questions in regards to the business or anything? Um, I wanted to know, this one isn't on you, but I wanted to know like what steps you would take as a high school student to like form you on like starting a business. Organized. How? So I don't think it has anything to do with you being a high school student, right? I don't think because you at 15 years old have it more together than Maddie. What could we say? 95% of America at any age, right? So the two of you guys are on point. So don't. One thing I want you to understand is don't think that your age is a handicap, right? Cut yourself a little bit of slack because you know you're 15 years old. So. I know me and maybe you guys feel the same way. I'm pretty sure you feel the same way. You ever feel like you're um, not like you're running out of time, but you're behind? Like you should, like you should have that platinum album already. Like you should have that business going. Do you ever feel like that? I do. Oh yeah, definitely. See, me as a 55 year old teacher, I preach to them have have persistence but patience. Like don't shoot yourself in the foot because you haven't changed the rap game in six months and throw your hands up and give up. You have to be patient with yourself and believe in your dream. And it's going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of effort, which you brought out in yeah. class the other day. So the first thing, thing is understand you have to be it, – it's about mindset, right? So you have to understand if you want to be a very successful entrepreneur that it takes everything you got, yeah. right? It's like you got to be willing to bleed for it. You can't care what people think. You have to understand that you're going to have to fail through this, like have a series of failures that lasts your entire lifetime. And you have to be attached to the process because the process for success, whether it's being the best rapper in the industry or being in the food industry or whatever other business you decide to go in, it's always the same. It's exactly the same. It's education. It's a plan. It's marketing. It's the process. It's X amount of time. So the first thing I always tell people is get that down. Then start to get the education. So research, competing food industries, what are the trends, you know, what are the demographics, and then build a business plan. I put that video out. I think you guys watched it about a business plan. I was not a great student. I didn't want to write business plans. You should do exactly the same kind of thing. If you have a plan, you're much better off because you can reference it. And then while you're writing it, you're going to think of things that you didn't realize were there before. And the main point is going to be like, who are you and what are you going to do? What are you going to do differently? What is your competition like? What's right. Going to Exactly. What are the risks? Like what, don't be afraid to write down what could go wrong. 
what could go right, what are the margins like, etc. And then you're constantly revising that every six months, every three months, every year. You're sitting down and you're going through that. Another thing really important, take action. A lot of people, I have a lot of friends like this that are in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. They sit there forever. They have a great idea. Like they have, not your idea, but they have a great idea like you have. And your idea is great. Don't, don't get me wrong. I want you to understand. It's a, I think it's a great idea. If I didn't, I would tell you. Um, but it's never ready. It's never perfect. There's always something. They're always working on it. They're working on it for years and years and years and never launch. And what I try to tell them is like no idea is ever perfect. You know that your 30th rap album is going to be better than your second rap album and your 50th rap album is going to be better than that. It's just it's a process of constantly getting better forever. So you have to take the um, take the first step. Ali and I had this conversation and I said you got to start throwing, you know, daily videos up there about what you're doing and he goes I don't know how to start and I said hey the, the crappy video you make and put out there is better than the one you don't make yeah exactly and all exposure is good exposure all press is good press what else you got over there um, what's the oh you kind of entered this already but what's the best advice you can give um, I think that's that's pretty much it. I mean, take action. Try to have fun with it. Don't take things too seriously or too personally. People people are affected by the opinions of people that they don't know or that don't really matter. You know, the people that matter and love you or care about you are gonna, always going to support you and be around you. But even a step further, like you have to get validation and strength from yourself. Like you have to be able to stand there on your own and and be able to essentially. When I was opening, a, I had a restaurant, a burger restaurant I sold two years ago. And when I was opening that restaurant, my loved ones were pleading with me, don't do it, don't do it, out of love for me because they didn't see what I saw. They didn't see my vision. They didn't see what was inside my head. I had to do it. When I got the key and opened up the dilapidated building, I saw my full restaurant, Coke machine there, counter there, pristine. I knew the colors. I look at my wife and she's crying because all she saw was the debris. Yeah. Because she didn't, we didn't share the same vision. Yeah, no, that's true. true. Like you have to be able to. Everyone's gonna think like to Ali's point before. Are they like your loved ones are gonna be the, your biggest road bump sometimes? Yeah, I'll, sometimes the people that are close to you. Very good point. Sometimes the people that are close to you and they, jerk. yeah, and they want to protect you are gonna say, you know, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think you should do it. Like my parents are very supportive, but at the same time, for me to just be like, hey, I'm gonna close down this business and then start buying houses and renovating them and then go back to school and start buying buildings or buy a piece of dirt for money that I don't have and build this massive building. It's not that they don't want what's best for you. They just, they don't see what you see, right? Like you gotta be able to see over my shoulder that restaurant, that chain, that whatever it is open and, and functioning. You know, you gotta be able to see the, the album, the, the groupies, the the, uh, the world tour. Not all the ladies, though. You're like a one-woman kind of guy. I can tell that. Okay, we won't talk about that. I'm gonna keep it, we're going to keep it G-rated. What else you got on that pad? Uh, would you say your success changed you in any way? <sighs> would I say my success changed me in any way? Um, I think we change with every experience, obviously. For the best, this is the one thing I will say. Like, as in a social media world, it's really easy to get caught up in, like, all the hype of, like, who you think you are. So you have to know that you're, to be successful, you have to know that you're better than everybody, but not better than anybody at the same time. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you want to have the confidence to know that you can stand toe to toe with anybody, right? One of the things I really love about Ali is like, Ali calls me up. I'm 40 years old. If I was 17 years old calling up a 40 year old that I don't know, I would be like, uh, Ali calls me up like we've been friends for 30 years. Yo, I'm rolling through. I'll be there at eight o'clock. Like, did you get the shirt? And he just he knows and feels comfortable that he can stand in front of anybody, whether that's the president or you know a fellow student, and treat him as equals and, and be comfortable. So that's what you. That you believe I think success about. gives you the freedom to be your true self, where you don't have the confinements of having to, you know, have the office etiquette because your boss is looking. You don't have a boss. You you you've done so well that you are truly free to be your true self. But you always like with success, it's it's easy to kind of get a little bit crazy. Oh, sure. So if if you're the uh, it, that's when it's good to have people around you that really, truly care about you because they will keep you grounded. Like you want that honest person to turn around to you and say, like, you're being a dick if you're being a dick. Like none of us are perfect. We all go through those moments. But just you always got to remember, like my mother has a saying, very simple saying that you've heard, but never forget where you come from. Right. So never forget where you come from. Uh, do you have any like success has habits or like 
good habits that lead to your success? So um, the interesting thing about me is I, I have a very addictive, compulsive personality, which, and I talk a lot, and I have a lot, a lot of energy, which is really why I'm successful in my opinion. Ironically, similar to what you were talking about before, Ali, that's why I was misunderstood in school and had a lot of disciplinary problems. I also have AD, yeah, I have ADHD, right? And I had it back when it wasn't like subscribed to everybody where everyone's like, you know, now if you have a lot of energy, it's like, oh, he has ADD, like just give him a pill. This was like 25, 28 years ago. So they put me on Ritalin. I took a pill one time, turned me into a zombie, and then I never took it again. I would throw it down the drain when my mother or the nurse wasn't looking. So ironically, what they were trying to, like they were trying to restrict me, my energy, and my compulsive nature ended up being what makes me successful and one of my biggest attributes. So just be yourself, whoever you are, all the time. Don't care what anybody thinks. King. King. How you doing over there? I want to talk to you guys about, um, so this is something that I'm getting into a lot more with Matt, but this is the kind of stuff that you guys are just born knowing. So I want to talk um, quickly about technology and how that enables, because in the music business, it used to be very hard to put out an album, do things like that. It was very expensive. You needed backing. It was like a, a corrupt industry and, and artists really weren't given a fair shake and a lot of times they were screwed out of money that they really deserve. But today, you can use a $199 Yeti mic, which you just fixed. Thank you very much for that. No, you, you're the man. Um, and you can produce an album that sounds better than something that was produced in a studio that cost a half a million dollars 20 years ago. So I want you to talk a little bit about, about how you use technology to produce and to promote yourself via TikTok, Instagram, et cetera. Because you do it very well. You're, very, you're like a marketing engine. <laughs> That's a good question, actually. Um, I'm a huge believer in being along all across as many platforms as possible. And if you know the more exposure that you can create, the, the better. A lot of people are in that mindset of, oh, I don't want to be on Facebook. It's for old people. I don't want to be on TikTok. It's for kids. Or I don't want to be on Instagram because it's you know for for children. And I, it's and and a lot of people have gotten into those mindsets. But when they go into those mindsets, they don't realize the ama you know the huge marketing opportunity they're missing. TikTok has almost 500 million active followers every single day. And it's not going to be like that forever. Instagram used to be like that. And I remember that back when I started my Instagram back in fifth grade, which is almost seven years ago. So I, I, I I'm you in fifth grade, bro. All right. <laughs> I'll keep going, dude. And I had a challenge with my friend Kyle. Kyle, if you're watching this, shout out. And um, he's... He's he's like Ali. I bet you can't get a hundred followers within 24 hours within the next within tomorrow. And I said bet. And I created this Instagram account, and I I easily got a hundred followers within 24 hours. So if you try to do that today, it's almost next to impossible because Instagram's algorithms are, are continuously changing. Now they're much different. Their organic reach is much lower. You know, for, especially for Facebook and Instagram. But TikTok, uh, especially TikTok and LinkedIn. Two, uh, uh, two huge. I think Gary Vee's talked a lot about this as well. Are huge uh, platforms where people can get a lot of reach very quickly. I've seen people on TikTok go from you know maybe a couple hundred views to thousands and thousands of views overnight. It's an, it's an incredible opportunity, and I highly recommend that anybody who has the opportunity to do so go across as many platforms as they can. And uh, yeah, yeah. so, do you? You have obviously a bunch of different platforms. Do you put? different content on each do you cater certain content to certain platforms do you put the same thing across everything just to get the exposure because everyone like to your point everybody it's a different target market right so facebook and nobody wants to be on their parents social media right so facebook is 35 to 55 instagram is 25 to 35 tiktok is 24 and under so you have you have all those so do you put the same thing on so that you hit all those people? Do you do different kind of content on TikTok than you would on Instagram? Do you have like a system or do you just wing it? Uh, no, con content, I, I usually create different content for different platforms and it's going to be, it's, everything's going to be catered. But I also recycle a lot of content from TikTok into Instagram, Instagram into TikTok, Facebook into this, you know, LinkedIn into that, Twitter into Facebook and, and, and so on. And I, and I recycle all these different forms of content so, so I can create the maximum amount of content that I can create. Because the, the way the algorithms are structured nowadays is that the amount, uh, as much content as you can put out, that's, that's what Instagram is going to boost. That's what's going to support. That's what's going to give the greatest organic reach. So it's really about how much content you're putting out. Um, as for TikTok, you know, the platform is absolutely amazing for people who are starting new businesses. The women are great. I said I was going to talk about that earlier, but honestly, I think the more the merrier. And 
uh, it's 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 we we just keep on we we uh, you know it, being across all these sorts of different platforms is <laughs> as is as um, advantageous as possible, and uh, I feel like a lot of people are missing out on a lot of that because of certain stigmas that are held around certain. Sure. What about you, Jen, in regards to you know promoting your future business? how you utilize social media, how you see that playing in, because that's a big part of the marketing plan. So a big part of the business plan is, this is the thing that people don't understand. People think I'm gonna open a business and everyone's just gonna show up and buy stuff from me, right? Like you could have the best pizza in the world, but if people don't know where you are or that you exist, no one's ever gonna eat it, right? So a big part of the plan that you wanna put together is, what's your marketing gonna look like? And you wanna break that out. You wanna say, okay, it's we're, we're doing online. So what does online consist of? Social media, what does that consist of? What platforms? How we're gonna exploit those platforms? Are we doing um, you know, email blasts? Are we doing YouTube? You know, what are you doing? So how do you see social media? How do you utilize social media for your future business? And how do you see social media affecting business in the future? I think you should like utilize every platform, but cater each, like, each video you do to each platform. Like TikTok is for teenagers, so teenagers tend to have like a short attention span. So you want to make it like interesting so they don't just scroll. Instagram is more like middle. So you can kind of do like a combination of what adults would like and then what teens would like. Yeah. And Facebook, if you're on Facebook, adults would like kind of read more instead of teenagers. Teenagers just like scroll. Okay. So if you wanted to explain something on Facebook, then you could do that. And then Instagram is kind of like a combination. So it all just depends. So do you think, um, do you think certain platforms prefer video to written or pictures to video? I think that TikTok would prefer video because teenagers wouldn't want to like read an entire thing. But if you're just doing like a short little video, which is TikTok, that's what TikTok is, mm -hmm. then they would uh, just look at it and then they wouldn't just scroll through it. Yeah, I actually, I, I recently got on TikTok and I started playing around with it. I don't have a big attention span, so I've, I've had trouble sitting down to figure out exactly how to work this thing. But um, it's interesting. I was talking to Maddie the other day, and uh, this podcast is kind of selfish because you guys know these platforms, so I get to drill you guys on how I can get better at certain social media platforms. So if I was to post a video on Facebook and I post the same video on Instagram to see, I'll get three times as many views on Instagram versus Facebook. Right. And I guess that's to your point. It's, you know, who your target audience is. They don't, they don't, I, older people don't want to watch videos the same, the same way younger people want to watch videos. Maybe they want to read more. I don't know. Maybe they want to see pictures, et cetera. Even the way you shape the video on, on the different platforms, Gary V talked about that, how you, how you frame things will attract eyeballs. And uh, one thing we talk about a lot in class and I'm trying to really get Ali into thinking about is how, adding value on these platforms rather than selling yourself and you know becoming that you know uh, crazy Eddie commercial giving value to the people which you do which you're, you're a number one at your videos all you do is provide value to people and you know you make you want more so when your video comes up it's like oh what's he gonna teach me today and we like that you don't ask us for anything and that's what I want them to really focus on is the you know, give value build that relationship, build that rapport, become that expert. And when they think of rap, they're going to think of Ali. When they think of vegan food, they're going to think of Jen. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. A lot of people, a lot of people in business, it's very, very easy to be successful. I'm telling you right now. It is very, very easy to be successful. All you really have to do is work hard, pick up the phone, get back to people, and do what you say you're going to do. It's really that simple. So many people are so lazy that it just makes it that much easier for you guys to be successful. There's a lot of people that are always, you know, stepping over dollars to pick up quarters because they don't see the big picture. I'll give you an example of that in the real estate world. So I'm not a realtor. Um, I don't want to be a realtor. I have a lot of other stuff going on. I would rather give that to somebody like Ken, who specializes in it every day and who can devote 100% of his effort to selling the house for as much money as possible or renting the space or selling that building or whatever it is. But if I was a realtor, I could save a part of the commission. So people are always like, Charles, why aren't you a realtor? You could save part of the commission. I said, think about it like this. If, if you, and I built a business, a very big business, very fast based on this. If you spread it around and you let everybody make money, you're ultimately going to make more money as well. We're all, like we all need each other's help. We can all get farther together than we can by ourselves. So the 2% that I would save, let's call it $10,000, I give to Ken. 
And Ken goes out, does a great job, gets me the most money possible for the house, better than I would. On top of that, if Ken ever gets an opportunity for real estate and he knows that he can make money with me and I make it pleasurable experience and we have a lot of fun and we laugh and everything goes great, he's going to come to me. When he gets something, he's going to think of me. He's not going to think of the million other people that are doing the same thing that we're doing, whether that be vegan food, hip hop, real estate, et cetera. So you always want to kind of selflessly give to people because you want to help them, but at the same time know that it does come back to you. And there's going to be a couple assholes in there. There's going to be a couple guys, p uh, girls or guys who take advantage. That's fine. Don't be jaded as a result of that. Don't change your outlook and the way you are as a result of, of a few people. Just keep doing it because the overwhelming majority of people are going to appreciate what you're doing and that will come back to you um, big time. Any uh, any questions to uh, to wrap us up? You, you, Ali? All your dreams, crush it every single day, and that's about it. You know, already know the vibe. Oh, also on January first, I'm dropping a new track. Uh, everyone, go check it out. It's gonna be dropping on New Year's Day at 12 o'clock Eastern time. As soon as the clock strikes 12, the song's gonna drop. So be sure to check it out. What's Am I? This one? You use balls? No, you use balls. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ali, you're the fucking man. I love you. I have so much respect for you. I see great things for you in the future, bro. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't give a shit about what anybody else says. You're the man. Jenna, you got any final questions uh, as we close out? Uh, no, I think now you're good? Again, I see something great in you. I saw in that class. Follow your dreams. Do what you want to do. Obviously, you guys can reach out to me anytime if you ever need any help in any capacity, but it seems like you guys have great support systems around you. Do it. I want, I want to be back on this podcast in five years and be able to look back and be like, Jenna's got three restaurants, five restaurants, whatever it is. Ali's got his first album out, and he's working on the second one. So um, He's on entertainment tonight this evening. <laughs> exactly. The only thing I want is backstage passes when it happens. Absolutely. Get, the, get, get it off. Get it all right. Off. Ken, you're the man. Thank you very much for that very rewarding Thank opportunity you. for me. Great. I, I could tell on your walk out you were floating on air after that. Uh, I, I could tell it was good for you. You yeah. know, going back and sort of got full circle and – you know, uh, it, 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 I felt good that you felt good. So it was, it was very, uh, it it was very, was very cool day. Thank and you. And the kids, the kids loved it. They were talking about it. They're still talking about it. So the kids loved you in the class. It brought, you know, reality to the classroom. It was, you know, very, they'll never forget it. Now, listen, and, um, you know, you guys are very, very lucky to have someone like Ken. I, I only had one teacher I felt understood me my entire career in school. So what you do is amazing and, and you're going to change a lot of kids' lives. I think kids like this and other kids are going to come back in 10 and 20 years and they're going to tell you, you know, how you impacted them. Well, when they visit me in a nursing home, I, I hope they give me some cookies. All right. Obviously, I'm the handsome home buyer. If you have a house that smells like cat pee, is dated from the 1960s, has six inches of mold on the wall, human waste floating past the basement steps, I want to buy it. 516-777-SOLD. And again, obviously, if you need permits where you go to people, know before you go, call the captain, 516 513 8838. That's a wrap. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah.